All right, so let's get started. Go to File New in Adobe Illustrator. We'll call it Typographic Poster, 16 inches by 20 inches. So make sure that is uh, inches over there. Everything else can be left the same, CMYK, 300, etc. All right, so let's start off by making our pattern. We'll take the rectangle tool and we'll hold Shift and just draw out right around there. I mean, you don't have to be perfect. It doesn't really matter. So I... Uh, Basically, this is just a square. It has a black back, uh, stroke with a white fill. Uh, we can get rid of the fill. We don't need that. Uh, and it's just one pixel. So let's take this, go to Object, Pattern, Make. All right, this little dialog box comes up. I don't want that anymore, so that won't happen again. And we'll leave it at 5x5 five five for the copies. Obviously, this is what we're working with. We're not going to be keeping this square. It's just going to help us see... Uh, it'll help us make the pattern basically so all right what we want to do we will zoom up with our magnifying glass tool and you know, maybe a little bit more and so anything that we do inside this square the reason these are dimmed out is because we have dim copies to 50 percent so it just kind of let, lets us differentiate between you know the active uh, basically uh, pattern square thing or whatever between the copies so We'll leave that like that. So I'm going to take the pen tool and I'm going to click right around at the top portion of the square. And the next part's going to be kind of tricky. I've done this a couple times and it's actually been quite irritating. <laughs> so like kind of around the center, you don't have to be specific or perfect or anything. And then come down back here. So we're just left clicking and dragging these points. All right. Okay, so let us at this point go ahead and take the direct selection tool, which is this one up here. And we could kind of see if you hold Alt and use your scroll wheel, you can zoom out easily. Our goal is to get this this basically connected over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and zoom up again. So the goal is, like I said, we want these two to kind of just flow into each other. All right, so I'm just adjust. We can't adjust these points because they're they don't really exist. So that's just one thing to note here. So what I'm trying to do is visualize kind of like a smooth curve that goes in between these two. And obviously, you know. You're adjusting these points, you know, however you think they will work best. All right, so let's go ahead and hide that uh, square layer right here in the layers panel. And now what we want to do is create another point. All right, now I'm going to take both of these and increase the stroke. Okay, that's at 100%. Now, I, now what I want to do is take the ellipse tool and we'll come out right around there. You know, just something that's kind of like a pattern. I uh, I think that will work out pretty decently. Okay. All right. So once you're done, what you want to do is take I. Uh, we can just you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it a new pattern. I'm just going to hit done, and then I'm going to take the rectangle tool and just go basically the size of the document and we will click on that. All right, so that's our pattern. It's filling this in here and it is basically transparent once again. I uh, I want to go back. If you ever want to ed edit your your uh, pattern, you can just double click it over here in the swatches and I want to make an adjustment. We'll go to object, path. Oop, we got to select them all first. 
object, path, and outline stroke. Hit done. All right, so now what we want to do is I'm going to move this above this top layer. And uh, yeah, it doesn't have a fill. That's why we can still see it. Uh, oh, was that the actual? Oh, I'm sorry. What we want to do is duplicate this rather. So control C and control F and then make it black and then take the opacity down just to 90%. So now we can just barely see our background right here. All right, so now what I wanna do is go ahead and I'm gonna zoom out here. All right, so I will take this right here, this is our pattern and hit control C and control F to duplicate that. And I'm gonna double click on our pattern over here and I'm gonna click on save a copy. That brings up this window. So I'll just leave it at new pattern two, we'll hit okay and okay. So I'm gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna hit done over here and I'm gonna double click on the copy that we created and I'm going to get rid of that uh, circle and then just hit done all right so we're gonna take the one that we duplicated and change it to this and if I just temporarily hide that or rather lock it so we can't select it now if we move this thing you can see it's staying right there so we have to fix that let me get back here all right, so to do that, we just have to go to Object, Expand, hit OK. And now once we move it, you know, we can kind of see how, oops, I think I selected the background by accident, the other one, because the fill is transparent. So now if we uh, move this over, damn it. I keep on selecting the wrong one. Let me zoom up here. And then we can go ahead and take our transparency of this one and just bring it down to around 20%. And it just gives us an extra element of design, I guess you could say. All right, now I'm going to zoom out here and then real quickly, I just want to get the actual uh, text that we're going to use. And so I'm just going to click, left click once and I'm gonna type in D, we can't see it because it's tiny. So I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna scale this up a lot. We will make it white and the font I want to use is, no, it's not that. It's one of these around here. There we are. Museo Slab 900. So it's a big, thick kind of serif font. And so for, our, for the typographic portion, it's just going to be DC. For me, that's short for design course. You can use whatever you want. And then I'm just going to copy that by Control C and Control F. Move this thing down. You can use Shift to make it on a diagonal course and I'm just going to change it to a, a capital C and I want these to intersect kind of right around there and then for just one final thing I will take the rectangle tool and just kind of come in right around here kind of wanted to intersect the characters just a little bit and let go. We'll go to gradient or you could just go up here, same thing, and hit the uh, X right here to take away the fill. We'll give it a stroke, make that a little bit thicker. And so let's just see what this looks like. You know, 
Now we'll go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. And then I want to get rid of, I want a little bit of a, I guess you could say a, a margin or a padding between, and I want them intersecting. So we could take the square tool or the rectangle tool and right around there will work. And I want to take both of these and if I just hold shift, so we have the, both of those layers selected, we'll go to window, pathfinder, and we want to choose minus front. And so that will automatically subtract that square portion. We got to do the same thing over here as well. So I will take the square tool again, right around here. And then do it again right around here. Selecting both. Oops, I hit the wrong one. Uh-oh, I think I selected the wrong one here. Minus. All right, well, it's giving me a pain. Hold on a second. Okay, so basically, if you take this all and you need, it's a group right now, you need to select the one that we're trying to work with specifically inside of that group, which is right here. So take that, hit, hit Control, and select also this right here. There we go. All right, so uh, we're already at about 12 minutes. Uh, I think that's a good time to kind of end it. Um, we can adjust this real quick. Get that over there. Yeah, we can uh, fix that at the end so it's not kind of hanging off. All right, uh, so that is it for now. In the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and finish everything up by giving it some color and also doing some other fine details. All right, so I'll see you then. All right, so now what we want to do is take our uh, two pieces of text there. They are currently type layers, so hit Control Shift and the letter O, and that will be a Control H. That'll convert them to outlines. So that's good. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom up. Now I'm just going to kind of work with this text to uh, make it look a little bit cooler, I guess you could say, for lack of a better term. Uh, so what we want to do is. We'll come in and we'll zoom up a little bit more actually. I'm going to create like kind of like a cut, like so the D is cutting into the C a little bit. So we'll take the uh, pen tool and we'll cook we're cl real close to there. And we just kind of have to imagine, you know, where this is at. We could have changed the color so we could see it, but that's fine. And just kind of left click and drag just a little bit and hold Alt and left click and then come in right around there. And then we'll end it right there. Uh, now, if you make this black, of course, you can see kind of the effect. And real quickly, we will take both of these right here, and we want to get out our uh, where are we at here Pathfinder, and we will merge those. And then we will take this and this and subtract that shape. All right, so now it's transparent. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Okay, so let's continue on <clears throat> with these, uh, kind of these cuts, I guess you could call them. Uh, I had to pause the video because my toddlers and wife came home, they're really loud. <laughs> you probably hear them throughout the course of this video, unfortunately. All right, so I uh, will take the pencil again. Um, next one, we'll just kind of do, you know, we're just kind of following these lines and these shapes and just, you know, it kind of creates a cool effect basically so I'll click right there and kind of end it right around here and that happens so I'm gonna control Z to undo and get rid of that pathfinder and we'll come out right around there oops hold alt left click and then kind of end it right at this corner all right and then connect it back up I uh, hold shift, select both of these objects, we get our Pathfinder back out, and do that. All right, so 
zoom out here and we will uh let's see here we're gonna add uh let's see two more all right so let's zoom back up man they're loud down there i hope you can't hear that it's very irritating but that's life working at home <laughs> with your kids all right so we'll come down here and create one that kind of just goes right around here so let me click right on that edge and left click and pull drag alt left click and it doesn't matter the fill right now it's just we're only concerned about the shape I'll take this hold shift select both of them and do that and then just one more time we'll come down around here all right so right around there alt left click and join it up take the move tool select it hold shift and minus front all right so let me zoom out just to see kind of what this thing looks like uh, if you hold your space bar by the way and then left click you can drag this around all right so that's looking pretty good so far um, let me go ahead and take both of these and let's change the color there's a default color in the swatches here it's just uh, this blue right here we'll leave it at that I want to take this as well let's go ahead and group these so hold shift select both hit control G to group them and I'm gonna make it kind of dark we'll try that I think that's yeah, probably pretty decent right around there and let's go ahead and start working with our uh, the strokes that we're going to create so I'm just gonna move things up here now this compound path I'm gonna copy that control C and then control F and we're gonna hide the bottom one just to kind of create a copy that you know that we can use in the future all right, so now what I want to do, I'm going to hit Control H to get rid of the outlines. Now what we want to do is go ahead and give it a stroke. Now we want to view our uh, appearance right here. So with the compound path selected, we can see there's a stroke. There's no stroke right now. So if we just give this a stroke, and let's see here, it's black, I think. So we could change that to white. And we'll go around five now what we can do with this stroke area selected we can go to effect we can go to distort and transform and then transform and this comes up so if we select on preview and we focus here on move if we slide this a little bit we'll see it only affects the stroke not the base you know DC there so take both of these and kind of just move them down just a little bit I'd say that looks pretty good right around there and then hit OK we now kind of have this cool sort of offset uh, stroke thing going I uh, I don't want to leave it like that so what I want to do is go ahead and go to object path outline stroke all right, so now if we drop this down, I created a group. We have the DC right here, and then we have the stroke text, or not text, but the outline right there. And what we want to do on group, with that selected, we can right click, ungroup. All right, so basically that just takes them out of that group folder, and now they're both right here. So what we want to do is, with both of them selected, and they are, we can go to object clipping mask make all right so that obviously doesn't <laughs> look all that good in and of itself uh, what I want to do is yeah don't do that that's not what I want to do I uh, I want to make this right here this blue we'll change that to right now the let me go to gradient here there switch that if you go over there and our layers got hidden make that white all right so now we change this to white and now if we bring this back up we can kind of see 
that the stroke doesn't kind of go outside of the letters. Okay. So now we can kind of create some more of these strokes just to kind of give, you know, an interesting appearance to this text. So I, uh, what I want to do is we'll close this up and I'm just going to duplicate that again. So control C, control F and I'll hide this bottom one. We'll come down here to appearance click on stroke and this time we can give it maybe a lighter stroke like around three instead of five and then we will do the same thing we'll go to effect distort transform transform preview uh, this time maybe we'll go the opposite direction and you can just kind of eyeball this hit OK I do want to make it like a thinner stroke so we'll go to two all right and let's see how this looks so far all right now this one i don't think we're going to make it a clipping mask i think what we'll do is take this color real quickly uh, maybe drop it down to like a mid gray and we will move this to the bottom actually i want to separate those though so let's go ahead and go to object path we will go to outline stroke. We'll delete this portion, the actual text, and I uh, get that back up. Take this. It's not a group because it's only itself, so just ungroup. And we'll put it beneath there. All right, so let me zoom up just a little bit so you can see this a little better. All right. I think I might do maybe one more type of strokish thing. <laughs> All right, so uh, we will control C, control F that base that initially we created um, the compound path. Hide this one. We're going to do this one more time. So we'll take our stroke here. Uh, let's go three. Then we will go ahead and change this to. Uh, I think like a lighter, well, maybe a darker blue right around here. And with this selected, we'll go to effect, tr distort, transform, and preview. And play with this a little bit. I'm not sure if I want to go out that far. Or maybe. All right, we'll hit OK. We'll do that same thing once again. We'll go to Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. And then we will right-click, ungroup that. Get rid of this. And we still have this. All right, now let me zoom out here. Kind of see what this thing looks like. All right, so, you know, you can also play around with uh, blend modes for the layers, kind of like in Photoshop and After Effects. Uh, you can do an overlay and that kind of changes the appearance. Let me zoom up here real quick. And uh, color dodge, you know, it's kind of just a matter of playing around just to see if you like any of these results. What am I doing? Am I on the right layer? I don't think I am. There. I think that's the new one we created. So yeah, if we go to overlay, it kind of creates this transparent thing that you can only see in the background uh, color dodge that looks too messy screen lighten color burn so you can experiment kind of use what you know you think kind of looks good and people are being loud downstairs one second here difference looks terrible exclusion hue you know whatever you want. I think I'm just going to go to normal. You can even just take the opacity down a little bit or a lot just to give yourself, you know, and you could use your arrow keys as well to kind of adjust these. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and zoom out so we can kind of see this full effect that we have going here. And I think that is it. Uh, if you need to adjust things around here, 
first of all, we'll lock our layers so we can only select this. And you could hold uh, Control or no Shift and Alt to scale this thing as you need. You kind of position it around. And there we go. I uh, let me go ahead and. All right, so basically, uh, if you need to, usually if you were, you were going to print this for a, you know, for actual print, you know, and you're using a print company, usually they would provide you with a, uh, a template file, depending on whichever size you wanted to use. And that would contain uh, the bleeds and edges that you would need to kind of make sure you, I guess you could say, obey. <laughs> uh, Otherwise, when you go to send it to them, you know, the print might not come out well. But we didn't use that. Uh, but pretty much, you know, the ideas that we use to design this, you know, they're, they're definitely applicable to uh, the, the process of print design for posters. All right. So check out my instructor page to check out more of my tutorials and courses that I'm sure you will find very useful. All right. Thanks for watching. And I'm Gary Simon.